Hi, I'm Coach Neil. And I'm Coach Katie. And we're here to talk a little bit about carbs today. This is the first in our series of nutrition topics for the fall semester. So every week over the next six weeks, we're going to go over different topics that relate to your nutrition, your body health, but overall just taking care of your body as an athlete. There's so much that goes on in an athlete's life that's really, really important to having success way beyond what we do in the weight room and the training room and on the athletic fields. So we want to make sure that our Liberty Christian athletes have those tools and have the ability to, to perform at the highest level possible. So this week, our first week, as most of you know, we're talking about carbohydrates. Good. Now, the first thing we got to do is explain what a carbohydrate is. So short, shorthand, we're always going to call it carbs. Um, carbs are your fuel source and carbs get a bad rep, right? Like everybody talks about, especially in the day of keto diets and Atkins, um, a lot of people feel like carbs are a bad thing. It's the worst mentality you can have as an athlete because carbs are your fuel and they're not just fuel for your athletic endeavors, right? Like they're your fuel for being out in the field and playing a game or a match or a, a race, but also they're your body's fuel for everyday activity for brain activity when you're in the, in the school setting and in the classroom, you need carbs to perform well there. And then they're also gonna fuel your body's processes. So if you wanna build muscle, your body needs carbs to fuel that process. Your body won't efficiently build muscle, recover from injury, or do many other processes that are crucial to being an athlete without adequate carbs. Now, when you're talking about carbs, Carbs cover a wide range of foods, and there's really carbs in just about everything except for your meat sources. But your uh, two big categories you wanna think of when it comes to carbs are gonna be complex and simple. Now, I don't wanna call these good and bad because they all have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You can use simple carbs in the middle of a race, and it's gonna be really effective at getting your blood sugar up and giving you some immediate energy. And you can use complex carbs to prepare your body over the course of a few days before a race and even the day of a match or competition. So they all have their purpose, but we're gonna talk about the differences in these just a little bit today. Um, the first is complex carbs. So this is what you would think of as your good carbs. This is gonna be your whole wheat grains and pastas. This is gonna be your vegetable source starches such as potatoes, carrots. Um, this is also gonna be your rice, your brown rice, your white rice, and some of your beans. These are more, a more complex molecule. That's why they're not as sweet when you eat them. And your body can take these, and because they don't turn immediately to energy, they can store them as glycogen, which you can then use later. And Katie's going to talk about that here in a second. So complex carbs are what we want to get the majority of our carb load from because we're going to use them more efficiently. It's not going to turn to fat as quickly. Now, simple carbs are going to be your sweets, your candy, your cake, your cookies, um, <laughs> Any, anything that's going to have a really sweet taste and your fruit is a, is a simple carb as well, although it kind of falls halfway in between complex and simple. Um, and drinks too. Sugary drinks fall in this category as well. Yes. Gatorade is a simple carb. Not always good for you at 10 o'clock at night. Moderation. <laughs> so these carbs are what you want to take when, let's say we're two hours into a football game and my blood sugar's low, I'm exhausted, I need some immediate energy, a simple carb is going to immediately boost me up and give me a quick burst, something my body can use right there on the spot. Same with a race. There's a lot of racers that will use simple carb packets right before they go out and uh, run their race, and it helps give them immediate blood sugar and energy for their competition. So both simple and complex carbs have a use. There's definitely, you can abuse simple carbs if you're... Uh, really into sweets and that's not a good thing but carbs when used correctly are a huge tool for any athlete um, and that, Katie's going to tell us about carb loading a little bit. Yes so carb loading is what you kind of hear before runners want to run a marathon or before a big event or something like that and so the, there is science behind it which we want to talk about a little bit um, but I think it can be taken out of context too and so the numbers that you want to think about um, before a big event are three to five grams of carbs per pound for the day leading up to the event. So for example, if you weighed 100 pounds, you would want at least 300 grams of carbs that day leading up to the event for proper fuelage for your body. And just as Coach Neil had mentioned, um, glycogen is kind of the scientific term for carbohydrates. <laughs> Dang it! 
trying to make it through this. Okay, glycogen is the complex term of the scientific part of carbohydrates. And when your body uses that, God made our systems really, really cool to use that and break it down into glucose, fructose, and lactose in different versions to be used in different ways. And so we need carbohydrates for all of those things to function, just as Coach Neil had mentioned. And so properly feeling that prior to an event will lead you to greater success for long-term performance versus using those simple carbs just right before to get that boost. And it may sound like a lot, um, three to five grams per day, because I mean, like she said, for a hundred pound athlete, that can be up to 500 grams, but you have to remember that's only 12 to 1500 calories. Mm -hmm. And if you're getting 60 to 70, 60 to 70% of your calorie load on a, a carb loading day, um, from carbohydrate, that's really not going to blow you out of the water calorie wise. And you need those calories for the next day. Now, what you can do is on those days, you can actually drop your fat intake a little bit. Um, we don't recommend a super low fat diet for anyone all the time because you need those fats, especially healthy fats, mm -hmm. especially for brain function. But if you're carb loading and you're getting 1500 to 2000 calories from carbs in a day, that might be a great day to back off our fat a little bit and focus mainly on carbs and your protein sources. And one of the things we want to talk about when it comes to carbs is the way that carbs actually affect your blood sugar and your insulin levels. And if anybody has diabetic relatives or is diabetic, you'll know this, but carb intake actually directly affects your body's ability to have higher low blood sugar, which affects your mood, it affects your energy levels, it affects um, your ability to perform on the field as well. Um, it's why diabetics have so many challenges in controlling their diet. But even if you're not diabetic, you can use this to your advantage and understand that it can be used to your disadvantage if you make mistakes. So for instance, your simple carbs, which have a high glycemic load, and all that means is it's going to really swing your blood sugar high and low really fast. Um, if you take those late at night, it's going to increase your blood sugars, increase your body's insulin levels, and insulin acts as a trigger for anabolic and catabolic effect in your body. That's really fancy words. All it means is if your insulin's high, your body wants to build something. Now, if you've been training, if you're lifting, that's why carbs are great post lifting, mm -hmm. your body wants to build muscle. And so that anabolic effect will build some muscle in your body. But if it's 10 o'clock at night and you haven't trained that day and you take a bowl of ice cream in, your insulin goes up, your body wants to build, and what's it going to store? It's going to store a bunch of fat. So that's why carbs can get you in trouble so fast, is simple carbs at the wrong time can be really unuseful for your body. On uh, the same token, simple carbs at the right time, let's say you're about to take a test or a quiz, and you want a burst of energy, and you want um, to think just a little bit quicker, well, a quick dose of simple carbs can help you then. Let's say it's post-workout and you want to make sure your body takes advantage of the exercise you just did, whether it's recovery from a game or you're trying to build muscle while lifting. They both kind of work the same way. If you take in some simple carbs with some proteins, then your body's going to use that to build muscle or recover tissue that's damaged from your exercise. And for all those female athletes out there, don't freak out that you're going to bulk up or get big when you're doing these kinds of things. This is proper nutrition for all of our body systems to work as female athletes as well. And so all of these things are great. It's not going to make you a crazy bodybuilder either. So I just want to encourage you guys in that, that this is all very healthy for you, for your systems as well. And finally, I want, keto, uh, I want Katie to talk about keto diets here for a second because it's really popular in today's culture. Yeah. There's a lot of people actually having success with, with ketogenic diets and losing a lot of weight, but why is that a bad thing if you're an athlete? So for athletes, we need fuel, we need to perform, we need to go at the highest level, kind of how our body was intended to work. Keto kind of flips our whole systems up and one thing can kind of mess up the ketogenic process a little bit. And so for athletes, um, proper fuel with carbohydrates and the right proteins and the right fats, balancing out will help that. Keto is great for our parents or someone who's an adult who's not performing high level intensity workouts um, because of how our body burns fat differently than it does um, carbohydrates. Bottom line, keto is not ideal for athletes. It doesn't help um, long-term sports performance because it's not fueling your body in that sense. And so ketosis is that small um, window where your body's just burning the fat and not the glucose because it doesn't have glucose. But just as Coach Neal mentioned, for all of those other systems in your body's work, there has to be some sort of that simple carb fuel, complex carbohydrate fuel, 
um, anything of that sort. And it's kind of similar to people who want to do Atkins. I know that's pretty old school. Some of our parents are probably doing that, but that's when they replaced carbs, took carbs out completely and did, you know, intermittent stuff, which is all great long-term, but for a performance athlete, when you're working out every day, putting in the work here, you also have to put in the work in your body too. And that is a balanced diet with carbohydrates as well. And the simple fact of the matter is you should fuel for what you're doing. Yes. And so if you're not getting carbs and you're not going to fuel, you're not going to perform well. And in the end, especially if you're a smaller athlete, a female athlete, you're putting yourself in danger yes. for a lot of problems down the road from under fueling your body right now. Now, the last thing we want to talk about is, so I know carbohydrates are good for me. I know that I need them as an athlete. So how do I prepare day of for a race or a match or even a workout? And the answer to that is snacks. Snacks. <laughs> you you want to make sure that you're getting complex carbs pre-workout three to five hours at an adequate level. And, and that's going to change for everybody. I, I would say a minimum of 40 grams of carbs um, in preparation for a workout. What does that mean? It means you can't get up and go to a 7 a.m. workout and eat nothing before. You should have quality, clean carbs. You know, and that can be oatmeal. It can be a granola bar. It can be... Uh, toast. It can be a lot of things. Find what you like. I don't want it to upset your stomach. But you need quality carbs, 40 to 60 grams. Some of you, some of you guys who are on a weight gain plan too, that could be way above that. And then 20 grams of protein. Something simple. It can be a yogurt. That's that's what I do for my workouts every day. I have oatmeal. I have a 15 gram Oikos clean yogurt, really low fat. I know my body's going to digest that all really quickly. And it's going to fuel any exercise I'm doing. And keep that same mentality at lunch, too, because a lot of us are doing our athletic period at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So you know if you're going to be working out at 3 o'clock at lunchtime, i got to have high carb, I've got to have an adequate amount of protein, and I might want to keep the fats down right then because I know that's going to interfere with my body's ability to digest all those sources. Yes. Well, that's all, <laughs> that's all we have today. This is our first nutrition talk, and thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, please email me or Coach Katie. Our emails are on the school website at NavyOut.com, and go Warriors.